Hello, pilots. Did you miss me? I missed you guys. I'm glad to be back this week and uh, playing again, although it was a fun vacation. I want to take you on a deep dive of the LA-11 today, one of my favorite Tier 8 premiums. Not a great one, though, as you can see. Um, two things immediately right off the bat that people will tell you about this. You can see my top speed is 715. I had to boot, burn all of my boost to get there, and I'm using gold consumables to help with thrust. So generally speaking, you cannot hit your top speed in this plane even though it is very, very low for a tier eight at only 715, and that's with specialization and uh, equipment on it. Uh, without boost though, we're gonna talk about that in a minute without the, the uh, turbine, but we'll get to that. Uh, the second thing, as you can see already in the screen that people will tell you immediately is, well, the guns are weak, and it took me forever to destroy that uh, attack aircraft. I also wanted to ask you, you know, I've been on vacation, so I'm a little rusty. Are you a little rusty? Because I want to ask, were you watching the mini-map? You should always be watching the mini-map again. Every 10 seconds, you should be glancing down there to your right. Thankfully, I was not rusty, uh, or as rusty as I thought, and so I was already watching. So I knew to peel off to the right, one, to avoid the 262 that you see diving in front of me, but also so that I can avoid getting shredded by the guns of the heavy fighter coming in behind me. And this showcases the one excellent thing about the LA-11, which is the maneuverability. And you may say, when you think good maneuverability at Tier 8, you may think Spitfire 14, uh, you may think Key 84, um, or Key 94, whichever one it is. And uh, you may think, you know, Yak-15. And those are all very good, very elusive, very maneuverable planes. Uh, but this one is too, and it has something that stands out from those other planes in terms of its maneuverability, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I want to capture this rocket base, but um, there's 262, and it's obviously faster than me, but he's going to turn back in, and I have some help there. You can see my teammate off to the right flying the Horton, and um, so we're going to dive on this guy and try and catch him, and, you know, bot planes are not smart. If this was a pilot, hopefully he would have just flown away. But I can showcase one of the good things about the guns, although they are a little weaker in terms of DPS. They have incredible range, and they are pretty accurate, and so it's easy to knock things off uh, at a distance. And uh, I chose this match, uh, one, uh, to show off some of the good attributes of this uh, plane, even though there's some bad ones as well. And again, it's not an overpowered premium. It's not even necessarily a, a solid premium in terms of a carry plane, you know, being able to do good things with it. Uh, but it does have some really good things going for it. You can see that dancing all over the sky, the rudder, the roll rate on this plane is incredible. And so because of that, the maneuverability is better than the 96 turn time would indicate at first glance. And so because of that, you can pull off some turns and maneuvers that uh, other people are not expecting or that, um, you know, might at first blush seem like you can't actually do. So we've captured the center zone. We've got our rocket base. Well, I thought we had our rocket base. We don't have a rocket base. <laughs> so we're going to go get this rocket base. Um, and uh, at least have a rocket base. The only thing, good thing going for us is the enemy team has not captured their rocket base either. So again, I don't have a great speed, but I'm gonna try and work my way over here as fast as I can. I'm gonna use that dive potential to avoid the AA, but also to get the speed up a little bit. This does have a dive speed of 800 kph. Again, not great, uh, but if you need an extra boost, pointing the nose down can do that for you. Watch the rudder turn here. Just, very tight loop up and over, right? That's the kind of maneuverability you can get in this plane because of the roll rate and because of the rudder and controllability. One of the things that also helps in this plane, ooh, I gotta avoid the Jawa there, uh, is the power to weight ratio. Um, even though it doesn't have a super powerful engine, in other words, not a great top speed or what have you, you know, the reality is it's very light. Um, and historically it was a light plane as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Right now I wanna talk about target priorities. There's a 262 flying in the background chewing up our planes as we uh, just captured this rocket base. And you can see I was trying to finish off the Jawa, but you may have noticed off to the right there that it was not me that got the kill. The Horton 229 did. Um, so this is not a matter of kill stealing. I don't care about the kill or the stats. I do care about securing a victory. And as of right now, there's a 262 out there that nobody is dealing with while the 229 dives on this target that's already half dead and being accounted for. So just be aware of that when you are playing, uh, especially when you have an aircraft like that. It's a very fast, very powerful aircraft. Um, you know, utilize its strengths. And you can see me typing in the chat, you know, please go, go grab the other rocket base before they do, right? You have the speed to do that. He can be across the map in no time, much faster than I can. But unfortunately, he's here rather than over there. 
and uh, diving to deal with a Jawa rather than moving off to you know counter the 262, which is killing our offensive aircraft. So I'm closing in on the backs of these aircraft. Normally I go for the rear one, but one of these is a player and a dangerous one in the 250 if they know what they're doing because it's big guns on that. So I want to take care of it. Again, you see the long range potential of these guns if you can get them dialed in. We're just trying to head to that rocket base, but we're going to clean up this sector before we get there. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. Um, and if we can kind of blunt the advance here, that'll buy us some time to go grab the rocket base before or as the respawns are coming in. And, you know, it's, there's an issue here as well. Our rocket base and their rocket base both uh, shooting, shooting rockets in, but ours is shooting somewhere else and theirs is shooting here. So I'm going to avoid some of that fire, and I'm also going to keep an eye on that mini-map again. Hope you guys were doing the same thing and kind of getting an idea. Again, long range, we can still take some shots at this guy and hopefully clean him up. A little bit more, a little bit more, and we're good. Engine's dead, but that's not really a problem because of the low stall speed on this, which is actually the same uh, and lower, uh, the same, excuse me, the same as the stall speed for the Spitfire 14 and for the key as well. Now, I've noticed also, not just from the mini map, but from watching, that the I-250 has respawned and is burning in quickly for me. He obviously wants some revenge. So I'm kind of glad my engine's out. I can go low and slow on this. I'm going to force him to dive down into the mountains and he's going to overshoot me, and then I can do something about it because of, again, the great maneuverability. So just going to follow this mountain around, and he's going to overshoot. He'll get my pilot on the way, unfortunately, which will make this a little harder. But we're just going to do a very exaggerated scissor roll here, and we're already inside of him. We set him on fire. I'm going to use that rudder to pull this, the loop uh, horizontal, and we're going to shoot again. But we also got an issue. If you've looked at the mini-map again, you've noticed it's a 4v2 in here. And that's a problem because numbers are going to get to us and they've just captured the zone. So AA is about to be an issue as well. So I got to finish this quickly if I can. And I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to. One of those floating around is a multi-roll, as you can see. And that's going to be a Jawa and that's going to be a problem. Those Jawas do also have a better maneuverability than you would anticipate based on what's on paper. And one of them is going to do it to me right there. I turned my wings on to him to try and get him to uh, do less damage to me. Um, unfortunately, he's uh, hanging around uh, much better than I accounted for, and we end up in a respawn situation. So the bad news is we're down three zones to two, even though we're up 60 points, and we need to get back in there and kind of make things happen. So I'll hop around, look at the other planes, but basically I'm going to jump us right into the next respawn. And again, target priority. My 229 is going for this zone down here in the lower right. It's a garrison. <sighs> It's not as important, right? There's other things to be doing, especially capping. You always want to prioritize capturing a zone over defending a zone if possible. Um, you know, a fighter like this is better at defensive because it's not as fast, but I'm going to have to play it as offensively as possible. And as you can see over there, you know, we're going to capture that zone one way or the other. Um, this is the one that really needs help, but now I'm having to come in here with just me and one bot. And uh, hopefully get it fast. So... And, of course, we lost a couple over there. So now you can see the guns aren't nearly as bad as some people would say. At least I'm able to one-pass these light air defense aircraft. I'm going to have to roll on on that one because not only am I worried about the air defense aircraft, I've got the 250 coming in again. And if you're watching the mini-map again, we're back in a 4v2. This time, though, I have a little bit of altitude. I have a little bit of uh, speed again. And I can more easily deal with this. I've also got some help in the form of the rocket base shooting rockets at this. So we're also at squall line, which presents me with an incredible opportunity to do some real damage here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to avoid the incoming shots there from one aircraft. We're on the 250, but then we draw the attention of the Seafang. And so we've lost our engine. That just helps us turn better. I'm going to kick the pneumatic assist. That'll really get us inside. I'm going to stick with the 250 because he's already half dead. And because of my low stall speed, I'm able to pull off this. And because of my great rudder control, I'm able to flip back down. Now, the two, the Seafang is obviously pneumatic assisting too. I turn wings on to take a little bit of damage from him, immediately use the fire extinguisher. This is why you carry a fire extinguisher, folks, instead of relying on the firefighter skill um, because you can do it immediately. And this is a 1v1 now with him. Now, there's a couple other bots I'll need to avoid, but basically this is easy. I'm going to dive. That's a heavy now instead of the Jawa, so I can move out of it. And we're just going to track him, set him on fire. 
he's going to lose some control surfaces and plow to the mountainside. Because this is squall line, they're both gone. This is now our game to win. Um, even though they're even, we're up three zones to two. They've lost their two players. This is really good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and snip off some more planes here and get rid of them. Uh, the bot, for example, there, i got to avoid the heavy coming in again. It's a 262, if I remember right. And uh, yeah, 262, so i got to avoid. He nearly takes me out. But I'm going to work these long-range guns again. I've also got to be careful because it's still three to, now it's three to three. Now I can be, but I, I pull off to maybe get a little bit of regeneration going, um, get a little bit of speed, and then re-engage. Um, I also don't want anybody catching me on uh, when I, as I go up, right? I don't want to be vulnerable to the other aircraft. I want to get some speed as I make that climb. Fortunately, we got it down. That guy's going to roll out. I'm going to do a little bit of damage in long range, but he's still very fast. I'm going to try and figure out with only three planes left where those planes are because I'm guessing that's our best bet, especially now we've capped four zones to one. But I also realize this is probably the end of the game. It's really just a matter of getting points where possible. And because I don't have a great top speed, you know, I got to go somewhere. <laughs> our bot kills the guy over there. I'm going to go the other way. Somebody's going to uh, kill that bot. Our 262 there is kills their 262. Now there's only one bot left. It's a P-51D. I'm going to race that way. But as you can see, it's not going to matter. Because the uh, bot P-51 is going to die. <laughs> He kills our 265, which is great. Um, and then I think he goes down. Or maybe we go out on points. Which one was it? Yeah, it's, we're going to go out on points. Because um, I'm trying to get there, and I'm almost going to get to him. Get that dive and push. Get some shots on, but it's not going to matter at the time. The counter's at 800. I've captured three zones, taken down 13 planes. Uh, but you can see the weaknesses as well. Unfortunately, I crashed after this one, so you're not going to be able to see the post-match on that. But I do want to show you what I have on this plane in terms of a setup. Um, and so one of the things that you have to take into account on this plane is that maximum optimal speed is only 528 down there. That is brutal, and that's one of the major reasons why this plane is bad. It doesn't actually have to do with the high top speed or the nine-second turn time or the low guns. It really has to do with that because that means that your maneuverability takes a hit almost immediately, especially if you build this for any kind of speed. You can see up there, my cruise speed is above my maximum optimal speed. That means I'm always debuffed when I'm flying this no matter what. And so because of that, I do have a G-suit on this plane. And one of the reasons I want to do this is Major Payne just put out a great video on G-suits. I'd recommend you go check that out. Uh, he'll show you some, what they do and don't do. Um, and this is one of the things it does for you. One of the other things it does for you is add a little bit of maneuverability while still allowing you to get those uh, that accuracy against moving targets, that auto-aim buff with the G-suit. You can get maneuverability and auto-aim buff and counteract some of the debuff that happens here, which is why I have it there. And the reality is these guns are not that inaccurate. They're, they're fairly good. And so when you got the extra auto-aim from uh, the suit, which is really what helps you off the gun sight anyway, um, and you've got the extra maneuverability, you can afford to do some things with this. And so after that match, and this has been in my mind for a while, I thought, why not switch out the, the uh, lightweight power plant for the boost? Let's see if we can get that top speed up. And uh, I play with two different configurations, or I'm going to. One is going to be with the boost cooler. One is going to be with the extra thrust. Um, but the bottom line here is the other thing the boost does is gives you extra climb rate. You can see down there up to 137, which is phenomenal. We've also pushed our boost speed up to 765, uh, which is outside of 715, right, with the uh, lightweight power plant. And I'm only losing a little bit in terms of maneuverability. The reality is I'm not going to outturn in a flat turn the Spitfire 14 or the Key, either one, or the LA-15 for that matter, especially if they're geared for maneuverability, which for the most part they are. So, and if I go full maneuverability, you can see uh, I really can't get down lower than 8.3. There's no way I can beat another plane in that in terms of the maneuver category. So really, it only makes sense to build this plane for speed. It makes the sense to make this plane be faster than planes that can outturn it while keeping it able to outturn planes that can outspeed it. Um, it sits in that jack of all trades category, and so you want to build it for speed. You know, that's the reality. And so if you don't do that, you just end up 
cursing yourself even more because the stock speeds on this plane are miserable. You can see without the uprated engine there how low it gets. And this is also, by the way, with a chrome paint job, uh, which increases the cruise speed even more. So without any of that, um, it's just really miserable to fly it. And you're, not, you're still not going to, even if you take those things off and do a full maneuverability build, it's going to hurt you. Um, so there you go. So you, know, you might as well build it up for speed. And so because of that, and after thinking about that a while, all right, that's not going to work. We're going to put the ultimate turbine on it. We're going to get that boost speed up. And we're going to see if that helps us even more with making this a more offensive fighter, um, with capturing more zones, with being able to get around a little better and deal with some of the things that we need to deal with, especially on large maps like the previous one uh, where they just struggle. It just so happens I have an ultimate one sitting around. I think that was from the last marathon. I might have gotten that one somewhere. And uh, so you can see, you can actually boost it up pretty good. This one is a little calibrated at five. This one's actually gonna be 4.7 on max speed. So we're just gonna go with that one, make sure it happens. You can see, so this, you know, there's a little bit of a loss on that uh, cruise speed, but it's totally worth it, totally worth it to get up there. Um, with the consumable thrust in there, um, it's great in some sense. Um, and so, you know, I think about trying that, I think about boost cooler and what I'd like to do next is walk you through two battles, one with that gold consumable for thrust, but without the boost cooler, just seeing if we've got that basic speed, you know, does that help us get around better or with the boost cooler, you know, do we use the boost cooler instead and uh, get that 10 seconds of sustained boost. And the real question is, can I hit my top speed without the boost cooler? If I can hit my top speed without the boost cooler, I can just play a little conservative with my boost control and I've got great thrust um, normally, and that's good. I can recover speed quickly, um, and that's wonderful. If not, if I need the boost cooler, that's great. We can do that, but it also lowers my thrust and my acceleration when I'm not boosting, um, and that can pose a problem as well because you do lose some of your boost duration when you put on that high-speed turbine. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to look at this. And actually, uh, with the, this, it's 20%. It's roughly 20%, 20% acceleration with and without boost in the current configuration right now with that gold consumable there. Um, without that going to the boost cooler, I think it ends up being 20 and 10. And uh, so 20 with the boost, but 10 without it. Um, and that's not as good, but it might be worth it for those 10 seconds of extra boost, right? And that's really the quest. Yeah, you can see there uh, that we're on um, um, 10 and 10, 20 and 10, yeah. 20 and 10. There you go. So um, we're just, you know, kind of back and forth and see, we're going to do, like I said, both of these and see what happens. So let's go ahead and jump into the next match and uh, figure out which one's going to work better for us. So we have uh, the plateau and we've got a 2v2. Our teammate is in an F2G and the other teammate, the other side, has got a Spitfire 14 and a P51D. The Spitfire we need to worry about. Um, if we see him, he can still probably outmaneuver us. Um, Speed-wise, he could. You know, stock speed. His stock speed's better than us. Um, and you can see there with the the uh, thrust consumable, um, it's not doing it right. I'm not able to get up where I need to be, and so I'm already suspecting we're going to have to go to the boost cooler instead. But we'll play the match out and see what happens. One other thing about the the G suit that uh, Major Payne points out in his video, it helps with speed retention. And that's very helpful as well for this plane because otherwise you're going to dive back down to 528 pretty rapidly um, if you're not careful, right? And we want to keep our speed up so we're not as much of a target uh, when other planes are coming after us, particularly because we can't often chase them. There's that great rudder authority there. And again, if you can catch, right, these guns are not as bad as people think they are. They're just not as good as other, gu other planes' guns are. Uh, maybe. I mean, the reality is Spitfire 14 has 420s, right? I'm going to go ahead on with the Tempest here, which has the same 420s, and it ends up being pretty even. I could have actually finished him off and taken that if I had wanted to, right? So I just didn't want to risk running into him and losing the rest of that HP. I do have the reinforced airframe on here for extra hit points. I do find that to be helpful, and uh, it's already a thicker plane anyway. It's already got on base 20 extra HP than the Spitfire and the Key do. So when you're doing that maneuver kind of warfare, it helps to have a little extra HP. And you've seen several times where I've taken hits from folks and been able to kind of come out of that with a decent HP pool. And of course, your restored HP is higher than as well. The P-51 does not know we're coming. We're going to boost up there. And again, the long range power of these guns is going to come into effect as long as you can aim good. They have decent uh, muzzle velocity, uh, not as bad as you think. 
And for whatever reason, he does not react to our long range sniping. And so down he goes. Saber, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I, I, it probably felt like I was picking on you in this match. I was not headhunting you, I promise you, as you'll see. Um, but uh, Saber does end up running foul of me several times in the match here. Uh, we're able to get uh, through, get the uh, zone flipped here. It's two to two. They've taken the mining plant, though, and that's frustrating, right? We're going to need to do something about that um, because we still don't have our mining plant. So because of that frustration and not knowing how things are going to go, I'm going to go over here and go ahead and secure the mining plant by taking out that uh, bomber rather than doing anything else at this particular moment. It could be the AA gets him, but you can see AA's flashing on both these guys, and I'm not sure it's going to do it, and we need it as soon as possible because the timer is clicking on the other one, and so I just go ahead and finish him. We're just going to go ahead and take that zone and move on. And we're going to send our bots over there. That's where they need to go. I need to go take the air base, send us up four to one. Um, because we're not going to be up on capture points for very long with that other base already more than halfway through its tick, its two-minute tick. See the Spitfire? I'm going to try to avoid him for now. He's climbing, so if I have to fight him, energy fight. I was not watching the minimap because I was watching the Spitfire, and the P-51D respawns right in front of me and immediately goes for me and probably, again, wants some revenge. We're just going to put him in a scissors, and that should be fairly easy to do. We're rotating around him. He's going faster than us because he was boosting to get over to me. And I'm going to use the rudder to cut under his turn right there. And we're already on target. We haven't even had to use the pneumatic, but I want to finish him fast because of all the bots in the area. And so I do kick that pneumatic assist. And pilot goes down, unfortunately. But it just means we need to be better at our aiming. That's the only thing it does. And this close, the aim doesn't really matter all that much because we're going to get him no matter what. Get a little assist from the J4M, although we still get the kill. And we need to finish off these guys fast before he respawns. I'm going to need three of these planes. Uh, somebody got a ground target down there, so I still need three of these planes. And unfortunately, this close, it's hard to dial everything in because of the camera. And I think I've got him here, so I start to pull off and then realize, oh, crap, i got to finish him. <laughs> so the guns are a little weaker. I don't think they're terrible, but they could use a little bit of a buff uh, for sure. We're going to get this guy out and then immediately turn. You can see the 51 spawned in the distance there. And my goal is I just got to get one more. I got to get this. This I figured this guy is easier to get out than the P-51. It's a shorter time period. I don't want to lose another plane in that time. right? I just need to get this thing rolled over. And I haven't even looked at the top of my map. I'm more worried about the mini map and all this. And I realized, dang, they took the garrison in the middle. P-51 is climbing. It should have come immediately back after me, especially knowing I'm a threat. Um, but I'm going to catch him a third time now in the match. Again, Saber, I'm not picking on you, buddy. Just happened to be the luck of the draw, I think, there. Because this is an air base, I'm going to go down and get some hit points, and then I'm going to move on. Um, in the meantime, I'm trying to look at the map and see what's going on. There is a bomber and a ground attack aircraft that are over there at our mining plant, but I can see the bomber is about to go down. I think about going to help out, but it's always better to capture, right? And I see, well, there's another, the, the ground attacker is about to go down. The bomber is going to go down. Like, no problem. This is no problem at all. Bomber's down, right? Ground attacker's going to go down. We've already got that pretty well. So it's going to be fine. So I move on to capture this zone, put us back up four to one. And I can already tell, you know, it's with the, between the G suit and the extra thrust and uh, the boost, I'm keeping and maintaining a higher kind of base speed, a higher cruise speed. And I'm enjoying that, uh, that I look over and I'm at 660 instead of 550 as I was in the previous match for the most part, right? Um, so that's a really good feeling. If we can clean this guy up, we can take the zone. But if you've been watching in the background, you've noticed what I did not notice at this particular moment in the match, which is that in that short amount of time I was talking to you, that 30 seconds, we've lost the other mining plant. And now both mining plants are under enemy control, and I have no way to get them back unless I die and respawn, which I didn't think about at the time. I should have gone and just crashed, you know, killed this guy, crashed myself while the lock was still on, gotten the RB-17 out, and just hosed down both those mining plants. But that's a 4D chess, and my mind was not there yet. It was not on the 4D. So probably still shaking off the rust from vacation. 
So I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated. The reality is there's going to be a double tick in a minute 11, and that double tick is going to be the end of the match. That's 160 points. We're already, you know, by the time we get to that point in a minute 15, threshold's going to be there. So I do see a little bit of light. I can see there's two heavies over here, over their mining plant. Maybe if we take both of those out and we have a couple of ground targets, we can flip it. If we can flip it, that'll give us a little bit of extra time. I'm hoping, but I also know at this point it's probably a lost cause. 1056, and I realized that our partner in crime, who wasn't a Corsair, uh, who could have dealt some damage to ground targets, has changed to a 262. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe a mission, maybe something he wanted to do. I, I don't know. Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't necessarily a guaranteed win to go ahead and get your double X on or something. Maybe he felt the bombers were impugning us when he saw both the mining plants go down. I don't know. Uh, but he did switch to that. Speaking of Corsairs, the new Corsair coming out tomorrow, well, today, really. I think a few of you probably already have it on this July 4th. I'm looking forward to it. And speaking of the Horton 229, the first video and the Corsair in this one, uh, Corvus and I are planning to do a video this weekend with, featuring both those planes since the uh, Horton was up for sale and the Corsair is not for sale as well. So as you can see there, not as many personal points as the last match, uh, but we have done 14 planes in four sectors. So that has allowed us to get around a little better and uh, to maybe you know have some more offensive impact on the match. And so I'm already liking the fact that we have the turbine in there. Um, it's really, that's it feels better. The plane feels better flowing in that way. And so I enjoy it. I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, I'm now good and set with this. I'll start calibrating these this gear. 14 planes is nothing to sneeze at. And you can see 3,800 damage is nothing to sneeze at either. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'll take it, assisting to... Uh, PA rocks, Pyrox, um, was able to take a garrison and then I think shifted over to the 262, which I thought was interesting. Overall though, this was a weird and frustrating match. The reality is I captured four zones, uh, Pyrox captured one. So that's five zones between us two players. The enemy team between the two of them, between the P51 and the Spitfire 14, um, I'll show you in just a second on their side, um, they captured one two. There's no way we should have lost this game. This is one of the frustrating things. You know, I don't know how one, <laughs> one solitary ground attack aircraft over the plant managed to flip it that quickly. Um, it was just frustrating. I assume the center zone wasn't completely, it was almost dead or something. And so that's 80 points you know, some damaged ground targets, whatever it was. We're going to try the engine cooling next. Um, I only have five of the gold ones, so I'm not going to use them on this video. I'm a little bit of a miser, uh, as you guys know. So we're just going to jump to the last match with that boost cooler and see if it makes uh, any sort of difference in things. And we draw plateau again. Not only do we draw plateau again, but uh, I'll show you on the plates here. We've drawn Pyrox as our teammate again. We're facing off against a BVP, dangerous aircraft. Um, although not as nearly as maneuverable as us and also B-32, also dangerous because I don't have the guns to deal with it. Um, so, or the altitude authority for that matter, you know, this pie. But we're going to put these guns to good work. And you saw again, the, by, by the way, the beautiful maneuverability of this plane as I winged over, dipped down, and just got on the tail of both of these, right? And again, right there, easy peasy. If you one pass ADAs, that's okay. That's okay guns. Not great guns, but okay guns. And burst fire is essential. You do have five seconds. So, you know, you can do a three count. That's generally a good discipline technique. And I also realize at this point, oh yeah, we haven't captured this zone yet. Um, that's crazy. I've already hit my boost cooler because I'm excited about moving on and I realize it's going to be a waste. Um, but on the bright side, the enemy does have two planes coming in. I'm going to undercut and roll so that the uh, 190 can't head on me. And then I'm just going to burn him down. He definitely does not have the turn or renewability to be able to deal with me. But bots generally, again, don't play to the strengths of the plane necessarily. There's the Yak-9U. I'm trying to avoid the giant cannon. Thankfully, I managed to do so. And now we're going to try and take him. He is pretty maneuverable, about the same as us, more or less. But in this uh, thing here, I'm going to be able to crit a wing. I'm gonna pull out, because he's definitely uh, trying to get me to overshoot. And I'm gonna do it again, get a second critical. I think that was a pilot that time, though. 
and then just finish them off at our leisure. So again, don't underestimate this plane in terms of what it can do in a furball dogfight or reversing people, especially if people are coming after you quickly. Um, they're gonna, you can force them to do that overshoot and then with the long range guns and the extra boost, um, you can make a difference there. All right, it's two to two, but they've got a mining plant and I'm, I'm dead inside, right? I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, we just now captured ours. They're ahead of us again. Is this match going to end up just like the last one, right? Ah, it's creep, the frustration's creeping in. So I'm gonna move over to the command center and try and flip it. We just do not need extra bombers floating around. Um, and I'm wondering where their bomber is. How do I deal with him? Um, you know, especially if he's headed to the other mining plant now and he captures both of those. Who knows, right? Oh, excuse me. Uh, I think about going after the bomber, but it's not the best use of my time. Best use of my time is flipping this command zone ASAP. My booster is back from its uh, misspent use before, and so I'm able to get down there. If I had had the gold booster on, I would have been already back up. And you can see, look, 755, I'm able to hit my top speed in a shallow dive with this. And later in the match, I'll show you in a straight line, I'm able to hit the top speed as well. And again, because of that G-suit, you know, we're able to maintain that speed very well. And I'm going to lose a little bit here dodging flak, but this to me is the, is the setup for this plane. It's the way to go. Um, I do think, you know, keeping the speed up a little higher, maintaining it better is, is definitely good. And again, because of the ground attacker here that we're defending, uh, we're able to beat these. I'm going to pull off, watch this rudder. That's so crazy, right? That, that, that rudder, um, that ability to uh, roll with the rudder as well just allows you again to pull off some almost impossible seeming uh, turns. It's a much better roll rate than the key or the Spitfire, uh, much better you know, rudder wise than the key or the Spitfire. So I did not get into a one-on-one -on -one with a specialized Spitfire 14. I imagine with a good pilot and it, it um, decked out correctly, you would not win that. Um, but against an unspecialized Spit, somebody grinding at the tick tree, you know, I think you might be able to take that in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, using that rudder and using uh, that ability to roll. But it'd be interesting to see. Maybe we'll get in a training room with someone and do a little more digging on it. So we're gonna move back into the center and flip this. I also noticed as I was talking to you, I was checking this and uh, the B-32 has quit the match. I have no idea why, um, but in some ways this makes us even. Um, you know, I know Pi was struggling to capture zones last time. And so the reality is them without the, the B-52 and of course, you can see pies over here uh, dogfighting in, in the Corsair. So um, the reality is this is probably an even fight now, me and the BVP and then Pi nipping at the edges a little bit. So we're going to see what comes of it. And I'm just trying to get the last 40. I mean, again, I'm going to build some speed up by diving, get inside my preferred altitude range. And the bug is going to hit, the cursed bug. So if you've ever wondered people talking about hitting air defense aircraft and not doing damage, watch this sequence because you are going to see hits. You're going to see the recognition of hits. You're going to see zero damage done. Watch. This is not bad guns on the LA-11. This is bugs in the code of World Warplanes. Watch. All right. He's down to 60. And I've been taking off. I've been doing damage fine. No big deal. Right. We got this. Now watch. See the hit registers? See the sparkles? I hit again. See it again? Nothing. I'm even getting hit registers again. Nothing. Hit registers again. Nothing. I'm doing zero damage. And this is one of the things that frustrates people. And, you know, we brought it up as a bug in Discord. Uh, we were told, oh, it's the ping of the server. You can see up here in the corner, top left corner. My ping is, what, 30, 40 milliseconds? This ain't a ping issue. You know, this is not an issue with my client or, or anything else. This is an issue with a bug in the code. Um, and the sooner they can fix it, the better off we will all be. Um, it's just frustrating. You're going to see it again in a second with one of the light uh, air defense aircraft over the command center here. But again, you know, you might chalk that up to the bad guns, but it's not. Um, that's, actually, that's actually a problem. So I see the BVP coming in because I've been watching the minimap. Were you watching the minimap? I was watching the minimap every 10 seconds and the BVP overshoots me and I'm just going to use that rudder to go under his turn and follow him around. And then I'm going to use my pneumatic assist to close the gap and get this a done deal faster. He continues to circle. Not a good idea. Even a full bore maneuverability BVP cannot catch this in a turn fight. 
Um, his best bet was to use that rocket engine and leave and then come back for a head-on because that's what BVPs are best at. So be sure to play to your plane strengths and not, um, you know, not anything else. And that's really one of the thing, reasons people don't like the LA-11, why it's not a great carry plane or necessarily a good plane or a good premium. Um, there are no real strengths for it. Uh, it does a lot of things okay. You can see there in level flight with the booster, I made it up to top speed again, by the way. So that's definitely confirming this is the way to go. Um, it's not bad at anything. It's decent maneuverability. Well, it's probably bad top speed for a tier eight, only 750, especially for a light fighter. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, it's the same thing again. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting and not getting any hits, right? It's like, okay, it's <laughs> work. Um, but you know, bottom line, there's nothing this plane is super good at. And the really meta planes are planes that do one thing well. Um, and the Uber meta planes are the planes that do two things well, and one of them had better be speed. And this one just doesn't have it. So you really have to go all out. And at this point, I've captured four zones. Fortunately, we've been able to uh, get uh, through this. We're going to get a rollover, and it's going to be the end of the match, which is lovely. Um, so even though it may not be a great play, I'm going to show you here why another reason to have the turbine on is our climb rate is much better. Um, and so just a gentle climb. I'm only at 20 here. Again, you don't need to paw for the atmosphere. Um, and then we're going to kick the boost. We're going to go for the Spitfire first. He's pretty much out, out of energy from climbing after the bad guy with long range guns. Lovely. The 262 helps me. And then long range guns on the LA-7. We're going to put him down as well. And now we're only at 40 for this mining plant and we'll have both mining plants. So lovely. Don't know what two light fighter bots that don't have altitude were doing chasing a bomber over a mining plant. Don't know. Not going to question it. I'm just going to take the win and run. So there you go. Uh, our point total, not quite as good this time. But as you can see, more kills, four zones. This felt more comfortable, felt better uh, flying it this way. And so this is the way I'm going to kit my LA-11 going forward. And again, although it's not an overpowered carry premium, you saw what it's capable of against uh, an I-250, a CFANG, and a couple of bot pilots. You know, I was able to outmaneuver, put them down, and again, partially that's the extra HP you can get from that uh, reinforced frame I've got there. And I did that without any maneuver equipment. So, you know, uh, I guess I think I did, actually I did have maneuver equipment on that one. But, um, you know, the difference between that and this is 8.7 and 9. I still would have been fine there, right? So I really do think this speed build is the way to go. Reinforced airframe is the way to go. You know, get yourself that extra HP and definitely make use of the G-Suit's properties because although it doesn't, um, you know, the, the gun sight is 90% of the time what you want, this is one of those rare aircraft where the G-Suit really makes a difference um, and can do some good things for you. So I'm not sure why our B-32 quit. He's a pretty decent pilot. He runs B-32s. It's his favorite plane. He really had a shot at pulling this. Um, but I'm not going to complain too much because it ended up helping us for the victory. Uh, Finro, good fight, buddy. Um, he also did well, captured a couple of zones. So great aircraft. Uh, I do recommend the speed paint, again, just as much as possible to get that speed up. Um, I'm not going to reassemble. The only thing I might do on this is you can see I've got the 5% uh, or 5% engine cooldown instead of 10%. So I'm going to reassemble for that 10%, probably burn some tokens on it. The other gear, I've pretty much got it where I want it. AA tolerance to make up for the fact that I don't have AA tolerance in my uh, camo. You know, extra HP on the airframe. Uh, cruise and max speed on the polished skin. Um, I've got uh, fire resistance as well on that reinforced aircraft to offset some of the uprated engine. And uh, there you go. I don't feel like you've dropped your survivability enough on the fire to, to take the coolant. Um, instead of the repair control surfaces. And you saw a couple of times where repairing the control surfaces was really helpful. So this is it. This is uh, doing as good as you can with a low powered premium. Um, and you can see I've also set mine up basically to try and make it a tier eight version of the Antonov. The Antonov obviously much faster, um, but um, you know it's, it's a nine second turn time. Um, it's a 520 cruise speed, right? So um, I'm just trying to trying to get it into that. That nine second turn time is pretty good because that means you can out turn everything but turn and burn fighters. And if you can out turn anything but turn and burn fighters, and the turn and burn fighters are faster than, then essentially you can pick your fights. And if you can pick your fights, I think that's an underrated um, 
underrated possibility uh, with this plane and with other planes as well. So uh, MiG-9, I'm almost finished with, by the way, update on that. Hopefully we'll have a video on it soon, as well as the XF-90, which I have purchased and is in my hangar and ready to go. So that was a request from a while back. We'll try and get on that as well. Hope you've enjoyed uh, this deep dive on the LA-11. Um, do I recommend you spend 50 bucks on it? Not really. Um, I don't think it's probably worth it as much fun as I have with it. Um, but, you know, if you end up with it in a crate or something, you know, I think it is a decent uh, aircraft that can make you some money and uh, skill up your pilot with, especially with the extra 2X or 3X. So um, I don't think it's worth ignoring in your hangar either or for selling for credits. Uh, I would hang on to it, invest some time into it, and uh, really, you know, make it shine a little bit. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I will have a smaller video out for you, hopefully, maybe this weekend, maybe on Saturday. And then as I promised, Corvus and I will give you Corsair and Horton action uh, that should be ready to go on Monday morning. Until then, pilots, good luck and good hunting with your specials and chasing the Corsair. And I hope to see you in the friendly skies.